stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of non-stop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Thanks, Jerry. And hi, everybody. Welcome to the studio headquarters of Chicagoland's most watched, most talked about access television series. This is the 1403rd edition of Motorsports Unlimited. I won't go through the whole thing again because I'm sure you're as tired of hearing about it as I am of going through it. I'm recovering from multi-level fusion back surgery. That's the official name. And while doing so, I'm pulling early episodes of Motorsports Unlimited off the shelf until I am physically able to start shooting new shows. I mentioned last week I had an appointment with Dr. Yapur, August 27, 2015, so he could review my progress via the latest CT scan. I said I would report back. He is satisfied with the progress of the bone growth, although I must admit I'm not. It's been three months since the surgery, and that seems like a long time to me. Dr. Yampur is one of America's top neurosurgeons and feels I still have another six months to go, and he wants me to enroll in more physical therapy sessions. So, for right now, that's it. I think the earliest possible show I'll be able to shoot will be the Thanksgiving morning gathering at The Rock. Let's see what I pulled out of the archives. The Illinois River is a fascinating place and a little known Chicagoland treasure, but to really enjoy it, you need a boat. So today, we're going to learn about boats. <laughs> Well, it is my first show back, and I've decided I'm not listening to Bill anyway, and I am wearing a bikini, but I will make him happy by keeping the feathers in my hair. Okay, we're going to go over here to the first boat, which is a pontoon boat. We're going to get the name of the owner and member of the Yacht Club, first of all. My name's Harold Setterland. And where are you from? Pontiac, Illinois. Okay, I want to get a little basic rundown. You have a pontoon boat and you're a member here. Tell us what the difference is about these ponto pontoon boats as with some of the other boats with the other motors. Well, I think a pontoon boat is more versatile for family and friends and uh, just a good party boat. Uh, you can pull skiers, but I mean it's basically a very safe boat but I think it's a very uh, family ordinated boat and that's why I bought my pontoon boat. Okay, I heard you say something earlier that you got this boat because you've got children and grandchildren and it's a great way for family entertainment. You do that by bringing them out here all the time on the weekends? Yes, in fact we were with them early this morning and we're only a half hour away from Pontiac and uh, it's a very simple drive up here and it's like you say with the grandchildren they can run around and you don't have to worry about them uh, going overboard or anything like that and uh, that's what I'm very happy about. Well it's a beautiful boat. Can you tell me what kind of engine you have in this boat? I have an Evinrude 70 and like I say if you don't have too many passengers we can pull skiers on it. Uh, it's, uh, an all-around boat, I call it. I love it. And it is kind of nice because it looks like you can sit and eat lunch and do all the fun stuff like that, too. Right. You can sit and play cards even. We have a table, but we didn't put that up today. But uh, it's, it's an all-around, and believe it or not, we have a portable potty back here in case oh. anybody has problems that way. <laughs> oh, is that wonderful? Okay, I'm going to get around and get everyone else's it names here. It's right here. The portable potty. We're getting a point there. Could you tell us your name and where you're from? Rose LaRusa from Pontiac, Illinois. And you? I am Rod LaRusa. I'm the husband of this lovely young lady. How wonderful. And you guys enjoy the boat a lot? Oh, wonderful. We like the slow pace. Okay, let's go up to the... Wait, oh, here's one. Okay, and who are you? Kathy French, and I'm from Pontiac, Illinois. And how do you like the boat? I love it. It's fun. Okay, let's get up to the front. And your name? Brenda LaPiccolo from Pontiac, Illinois. And also love the boat? Yes. Ooh, Bill, come on out. You have to get all the technical details. I want to just start cruising around. There you go. 
Allison, I hope that we are not making our audience seasick because I should say that the pier is actually kind of a floating pier that we're shooting from and we're rocking here and you wouldn't believe when you're standing there waiting to be called in how dizzy you get with the one thing moving and not in relationship to the other. Well, if you are watching the show, take one of those seasick pills <laughs> and it won't bother you. Right, because you got to use the boating anyhow. That's right. Okay, the point that I want to make here, it looks like you covered everything I wanted to cover on the thing and that's great. Uh, the point that I want to make is this is all different kinds of ways of enjoying boating. There are some of us like, some people like myself who want the big, you know, give me two big block Chevy in the 100 mile an hour boat that's one way to enjoy it but you give up something for that and what you give up is this which is just a terrific kind of a family boat and it's also I think you said it was a party boat correct it's a party boat and family boat you bet I think these boats offer wonderful versatility I was surprised when you said you could pull a skier with it yes, though yes we can we can we got a 70 on here and we can pull a skier on it okay so this is a way of doing boating uh, and I guess you're also an Illinois River fan I love it right that's right see this here do it on the river yeah but wait a minute though do you kind of share my one of the things that troubles me about doing this is one of the nice things about the river is it's not real crowded and i hate to bring you know i want to share it with you guys but i want to use it up for myself do you know what i mean that's right exactly right okay we can use a few more people though yes you're being selfish it's a very big river well you're exactly right now we've got a ton more to look at i want to thank you folks for spending a little time with us and allison i'm standing right next to you please tell the folks don't go away folks we'll be right there Pontoon boats are wonderful for laid back cruising down the river afternoons. Now let's look at a kind of boat for living on the river. here at uh, top of this 35-foot uh, houseboat and uh, Crystal I guess you're gonna drive you bet okay we're gonna go down and see if we could find the owner and whoever else we might find on this boat okay this is a boat for the entire family cruising all the way down the Illinois River and down as far as the Mrs. Oh, who do we have here I have Judy I'm from Bolingbrook I'm doing my needlepoint and getting some Sun at the same time okay Judy on um, what relationship are you are to the owner of this boat He's my father. Wonderful. Okay, I'm sure I'm going to find some other people here. Thank you, Judy. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, Chuck, I'm probably not in range here. Going down some steps. Hopefully, uh, you'll see me up here. I don't fall and break my butt here. Oh, who do we have here? I'm Lynn, and I'm his youngest daughter. There's a lot of people on this boat. How many people do you think we could fit on this boat? Ah, uh, quite a few. We fit quite a few on here. Uh, well, the owner told me earlier that you sleep about six and as many children as we could pack in there. Yeah, and we can also put a tent on top and we can sleep a couple extra more up there. Great, for the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. Okay. Here I am. <laughs> Close quarters. Okay, we found the owner. How are you doing? How are you? Good, thanks. And, and would you introduce yourself to the audience? Yes, my name is Giles Lines. I'm from Tenley Park, Illinois. Wonderful. And I, I love this boat, and you told me many good things. I'm going to bring Bill in. He's going to ask you some more questions. Okay. Well, Tracy, I gave you quite a chore there, didn't oh, I? Yes, a, a trek. <laughs> yeah, she's absolutely pooped. I'm going to come right back to you, but I want to make sure we get everybody in on the act. If I can get the microphone cable away from you, Tracy. Okay. And you are? Dutch Hayden. And where are you from? Bolingbrook, Illinois. And you are? Charlotte Cothran from Posen. And? David Cawthorn from Posen. Okay, it looks like this is a fun way to spend an afternoon. Oh, very relaxing. Yeah, it really is nice, and I want to talk a little bit about technically what we're trying to help our audience understand today in this boat show that we're doing just like we do car shows is we want people to understand a little bit about the difference between boats. Obviously, somebody like me is going to look for some big 454, or 2454 engine Baja boat or something. But I also watch the other guys when I'm out with my little boat. It seems like people with pontoon boats have a great deal of fun. And one of the things that, believe it or not, maybe because I'm 51 years old now, really appeals to me is when I see these houseboats that the people almost seem to live on the river. I think that's very cool. Do you do that or do it like a summer home? Or? Well, at least it's, it's like a summer home. Uh, we come down here, enjoy our weekends, and we have taken some trips on it also, down almost to the Mississippi. And uh, a houseboat, you got a lot of room, and you can bring a lot of guests aboard. Really, I mean, it really is nice, and it almost does seem, now I've talked to some people since the time I spent on the river, there are people that actually live on the houseboat year-round. Oh, yes, there's a lot of people, especially down southern uh, part of the uh, country, that a lot of people live on houseboats year-round. But uh, 
we can't do it up here. I'd love to do it, but we just can't do it. And, of course, a houseboat is not is a, a relaxing, slow-moving boat. It's not a fast boat. You're not going to pull skiers with it? No, you're not. You would A skier would fall off a houseboat. You'd take it too long to turn around and to pick them up in case they got in trouble. Yeah, exactly. This is a whole different kind of boating, but one that's also very enjoyable. Now, I want to ask you about the power plant engines, because we do this is Motorsports Unlimited, and we want to know the technical details. What have you got in here? I, I argued, All I got was they call a Windsor. It's a Ford boat made for the, uh, a Ford engine made for boats. It's a V-drive. It's one engine motor. It's about 275 horsepower. It's not a fast boat. As I explained, about 15 to 20 miles an hour I could get out of it. I just think it would be great fun. One day, I'd one, if I was ever in a position to do it, I'd love to take a year on a houseboat and just cruise all the various channels that are available. I'm, you know, I understand there's 7,000 miles of navigable waterway, all available to the public for free. Oh, yes, yes. And your locks on the Illinois, they're all accommodating. They get you in and get you out as soon as they can. Oh. I can say one thing about the lock masters down through here. Very accommodating. Okay, so you enjoy it a great deal. Very much, very much. Okay, thanks for spending some time with us. And Chuck, I would like you to just pull your shot back. Uh, I don't, I can't get back uh, to the other girls, but I want to do one nice pan of the boat so we take one last look at this thing. This is absolutely a cool way to spend more than just an afternoon. I think you could spend a few weeks on a boat like this. What do you think, Tracy? Would that be fun? Yes, it would. With the entire family. No, exactly. No, I, like I say, there's more than one way to enjoy boating, and that's what I want the public to come understand if they learn anything about our sh uh, from our show today. If you would, please tell the folks. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Bill mentioned Baja Boats a couple of times, so we were anxious to see what he was talking about. And we found a beauty. Watch. Hi, I'm in awe of this boat, and so I'm just going to start off with the basics here. Can I have your name and where you're from? Sure. My name is Mark Miller, and I'm from Elgin, Illinois. Okay, and we're going to travel to the back here. And what is your name? Matthew Miller, and my name is Matthew Miller, and I'm from Illinois. Okay, and your name? My name is Adam Ivan Miller, and I'm from Elgin, Illinois. Okay, and this lovely lady here? I'm the mother of all these. <laughs> I'm Teresa Miller. Okay, and we have one more here. My name is Max Miller, and I'm from Illinois. Okay, and Bill, this is too much for me. Here you go. Yeah, I've just been nosing around downstairs because there is nobody on the face of this earth. A Baja boat is something like a Corvette. There is nobody on the face of the earth that doesn't love a Corvette, and nobody doesn't love a, a, a Baja boat. These are hot rods. I think we're getting closer to the stuff that I really like now, although I must say I'm 51 years old, and I have developed an appetite for those pontoon boats and for those houseboats, too. It's a different kind of fun. Notice that Bill mentioned he was 51 years old and was developing an appreciation for pontoon and houseboats. He's 71 now, and what he didn't expect to find with age comes decreasing energy levels and physical capabilities. That's why he's trying to encourage you not to miss any of the boating, racing, or car show seasons. The ability to participate does not last forever. Don't miss any of it. But I must say, this is for me. This is more like a Ferrari. Tell us a little bit about the boat. What have we got? Well, Baja is a family performance boat, and they specialize in very outrageous looking boats color wise and interiors and performance yes our girls match as a matter of fact the right. boat is all hot pink in here it's very cool looking what kind of engine we got in this one this has a 7.4 which is a 454 Merc Cruiser so we got a big 454 Chevy in here right exactly okay there are Bajas that also pack two 454s oh yeah well I am a Baja dealer Grand Sports Center that's who owns this boat you know we have two stores we have a store in Morris Illinois and we have a store in River Grove, Illinois. Uh, and they do have Bajas with two motors in them. Oh, absolutely. They have boats up to 42 feet. Actually, they have a triple engine boat. So you could have triple 502s, triple 454s. Oh, no. Wait, we've know. got a question here. Yes, Allison. What would you do with that much horse? I mean, is that would that be more for a racing? That is not a joy boat. That's not for water skiing. You could go flying. The best way I can say it, and I don't know how to say it, characterize it for our audience any other way than this. It's a little bit like how low cut should a blouse be, how short should a skirt be. That's kind of what boils down to if, if, you're, if you have it, a real appetite for the exotic, this is where it's at. It just seems like there's so much horsepower you couldn't really enjoy the full throttle on that. So anyway. Oh yeah, you can. You can enjoy the acceleration. <laughs> yeah. The speed of this boat, what kind of speed are we looking at This here? is a 55 mile an hour boat. 
Okay, and they do, I know Bajas, they do have Bajas that are 100 mile an hour boats. Well, it's horsepower, you know, however you Just keep adding them. engines. Just keep adding horsepower, that's it. Okay, this is another way to enjoy boating. Matter of fact, I, we've got, go ahead and demonstrate what you want to demonstrate. I want the audience to see this. Go ahead, Marlissa. She is, Marlissa is so tall, she discovered that she could do, like, Chuck, you got to look right over here with your camera shot because she's all excited about this. And so I know how to close this piece out. Marlissa, I want you to look over here and tell the folks. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Speed boats are wonderful, but how about something for those wanting speed and room? Now this is my kind of boat. What I'm walking on is the 1994 Maxim, and it sleeps about seven people, which is why it's my kind of boat. It almost has a apartment luxury, maybe like a condo or something. You can shower, you can sleep, you can party on it all day and night. I'm over here to the owner, and I'm going to get his name and where he's from. Mike Stanko out of Aurora. And tell me a little bit about your boat. I understand it goes about 40 miles an hour, which means not only do we have luxury of an apartment style boat or condo, or this boat, but we have a little bit of speed, which makes it perfect. Well, it's a 27 foot cruiser. Uh, cruises at about 40 miles an hour. Uh, it's got full kitchen facilities, full bedroom facilities, bath facilities, hot and cold running water. And it's running a big gate uh, block engine, which is about 450 horsepower, 452 horsepower. So then you can probably pull skiers and tubers and things like that, as well as hang out all weekend. Very easily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, one more little thing. Bill, you might as well start walking your way in. Right under me is a, an entire bedroom. An entire bedroom, folks. I can't believe it. I'm jealous. This guy is a wonderful piece of art in this water. Bill, please. Well, very, very nicely done, Marlissa. And again, uh, I hope what we're showing the audience is all of the different ways there are to enjoy boating. This is another way. I was interested to find out that this huge boat, in addition to having full living facilities, almost like a houseboat, in addition to that, uh, you can easily pull skiers on it. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm a little bit chagrined to admit this thing is faster than my little 15 and a half foot boat. Sir, can you yep. step over here just a little bit? Yes, Allison. I was just going to make a comment, too. By looking at it, you wouldn't realize the facilities that are on some of these boats. You almost have to come and talk to these people to know what's in them. Exactly, and Chuck, if you can broaden the shot if you haven't already done so and take a look at the boat itself, it almost looks more like a speed craft or something like that rather than a boat that is, I, I don't know, I would say very close to a houseboat. Yeah, it's got both advantages and it's also easy to beach it so you can go on the beaches, camp, swim, or do what you want to do. Okay, I want to talk about one other thing though, is one of the advantages that I think of the smaller boats is that they're very trailerable, easy to launch on a trailer. This one does not look like it would be an easy boat to trailer. No, you can't trailer this unless you get special permit. It's got a 9 foot 8 beam on it, uh, which uh, is over the maximum for towing on the highways in Illinois. Ah, so that means that this is one of those where you have to kind of put it in the water and it has to stay there. That's correct. Okay, folks, now again, once I, again, the thing that I'm trying to help you understand is that the everything is a compromise uh, if you have a little boat like mine I have the advantage uh, in fact I'm gonna puff my chest up a little bit and I don't know how I can do this with this in the face of this gorgeous piece of equipment but a little boat like mine uh, you can go and pick your waterway and go anywhere you, anywhere you want to go but on the other hand I can't sleep seven or impress anyone <laughs> Bill with something like this if it's got to be in the water how do they keep that up when when the water freezes over and for example well presumably it's pulled out in the winter yeah you take it out and you winterize it and store it okay okay listen great did somebody I'm sorry just, she's got a question. I'm going to have to repeat this because I can't get down to her with my microphone cable. Go ahead, uh, Tracy. Okay, I know, your, I know your question. Each of the boats, as a matter of fact, Chuck, I don't know if you can do it, but <laughs> just swing your camera shot to those other boats down there and look at the, I'm going to call them a pointy nose on them. Uh, we're talking about a little area where a person could actually walk out on, and I have a feeling that there is something of a, of a prestige involved in who's got the largest one of those things sticking out. If you step over here just a little bit, sir, uh, help us. What is that called and what's the deal there? It's called a pulpit, and basically it's where your light, your forward light is for running at night. It's your anchor holder. And it's also for observation. If you're running in shallow water, you want to see bottom or you're fishing, you can spot it from there. Okay, and I have a feeling there is some ego involved with who has the most pulpit. I don't know, I think it just comes with the boat. 
<laughs> okay, I, I, I know guys, and I have a feeling that that's very important. I know it would be with me. Uh, Allison, I'm right by you, so if you would, please tell the folks. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. From a full cabin cruiser, let's move to a beautiful example of a cuddy cabin. found here today um, someone else to, to uh, another way to enjoy boating. To my understanding this is a cuddy cabin. Could you explain that please? A cuddy cabin is a boat that has a small cabin in the front that you can store lots of stuff in and if you pull it all out you can sleep in there. By the way, what is your name and I'm, where are you from? I'm Rich Ely and this is my wife Rita and we're from Lamont, Illinois. Lamont, Illinois. And uh, to my understanding here this has a car engine in this boat. What does it do? It makes the boat go. It's a <laughs> <laughs> How fast can it go? Oh, uh, this boat will do about 45 miles an hour with a couple of people in it. Oh. Do you enjoy, do you go tubing in the back of this? Yes, I tube and I water ski and do whatever else is out there to do. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I think I'll get Bill in for the technical things here. Well, Peggy, nicely done, and uh, they said they'd be gentle with you because you're new with the program, you're brand new, and instead of being gentle with you, right away he teases you about the boat because we want to find out about the motor and all that. I'm going to come right back to you because everybody knows on Motorsports Unlimited we never ignore the pretty girls, but first of all, technically, the boat, what do we got in for an engine? It's a 305 Chevy. It's rated 240 horsepower. Really? You're running a small block. That's a surprise. Uh, that's a little more economical, and it, it does everything we need it to do as far as pulling skiers. Uh, we've had two boys barefooting behind a boat, and uh, that's enough. Yeah, if you can do two guys barefooting, that's that's going pretty good. Now, I understand your wife, and I'm sorry I couldn't hear from over there your name was? Rita. Rita, I understand that you're quite a water skier. Well, I try. Uh, this then, you wanted a boat like this specifically for water skiing? Correct. My daughter and my son also water ski, so we have a family. We do it as a family sport. Okay, I want to tell our audience that the boat we looked at just before this one would have been called a cabin cruiser. This one is called a cuddy cabin, and I've always said that a cuddy cabin is kind of my favorite style. And what it is essentially is that it's a runabout or a speedboat for a guy that kind of thinks maybe he wants a cabin cruiser, but doesn't really, he still wants a speedboat, so they give you sort of a cabin up front. How many people can you sleep? Two. <laughs> Right, two people, so it's not, actually, we can't give you inside camera shots because it's not really luxurious quarters or anything right. like that, but there's enough room that, in fact, Chuck, if you can do that, broaden your shot and take a look at the forward end of the boat, and there's a couple of portholes there, and there is actually a sleeping area up yes, there. Yes, there is. There's for two, and then people could sleep out here, too, if we, if we needed extra space. Okay, now I have to ask the question, uh, just like cars and people with airplanes, people with boats, they always long for something else. I don't care what they've got. They, You know, if a guy's got a Ferrari, he wants to get a Porsche. Uh, what would be your next choice? Eventually a cabin cruiser. You want more oh, space? Yeah. Oh yeah, so we could spend the night and take trips on it. Now let's see if their tastes vary. Uh, how about <laughs> yourself? Cabin cruiser next? Uh, I think something a little bigger than this, yeah. We'd like something we could spend some time on, come down and spend a weekend versus a, just you know a day cruiser like this. We don't spend much time sleeping here. Okay, and how long is this boat? This is 23 foot. Now can you trailer this one? Is it practical to trailer it or no? Uh, it trailers it well over 4,000 pounds. I got a four four wheel drive that I tow it with, but anything less than that, you wouldn't. It's a big V8 four wheel drive. You wouldn't want to tow it with much less than that, I don't believe. So we're getting at this length, at 23 foot, 23 foot cutty cabin. We're getting to the point where it's not really practical to trailer them. Uh, you can do it, but it's a lot more work. It's a chore. Yes, it is. Okay, again, folks, what I want you to understand is boating is, is very much like uh, like every other kind of motorsport. There are compromises to be made. Uh, I mean, if you want to do drag racing and you want a top fueler, don't expect to carry passengers. And something like this, if you want to do water skiing, this is sort of an ideal water skiing boat, but it's not something you can really spend a week on and sleep in it and shower and all that. Mm, that's correct. So everything is compromised. So this is obviously, this is a great boat. Uh, and did we get a speed on this? Do you know about how fast it goes? About 45 miles. I was going to say, if you can pull barefoot water skiers. Right. Yeah, you got to have some real speed. So this is really nice. Can I put you to work for a second? Sure. <laughs> okay, what I want you to do is look over there at our camera and tell the folks. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. By the way, during this extended rehabilitation period, I have received a number of emails wishing me well. I want to take a moment to thank those of you who took the time to write, even if I didn't respond. 
rest assured, I read everything sent to us, so my failure to respond isn't because I didn't receive your email. It has to do with the weirdness of this surgery and recovery. I've mentioned before, part of what I'm experiencing is weird fatigue. I hate to overuse the word weird, but I can't think of a better one. Like everything else connected with this medical event, even the fatigue is weird. Unfortunately, I'm pretty familiar with surgery and injuries, so I didn't really think anything would surprise me. Yet, everything has surprised me. I mean, let's face it, how much energy does it take to respond to an email? I was more than a little surprised that I didn't even have the energy to read the emails that had accumulated while I was in the hospital, let alone answer them. As I recall, it was perhaps a couple of months before I could even open them. And even after a couple of months had gone by since the surgery, I had trouble booting up the computer. Strange indeed for someone who has spent the last 30 years working on a computer. I don't get it. And I think I've considered most of the possibilities like anesthesia effects, medication effects, beginning Alzheimer's, or even just plain old age. Frankly, I don't get it. All I can say is more weird stuff. Don't even get me started trying to explain the pain I have to deal with. Describing it is nearly impossible. It migrates all over the place and is rarely the same in location, intensity, or type. Try telling a doctor after you complain of pain and he asks you where and you have to say you really don't know. That's right, pain, but you don't know where. Actually, the doctors don't seem particularly surprised by this and usually just remind me of how many nerves have to be cut for a multi-level fusion on one's back. Again, having pain you can't really describe is weird, but it is what it is and I don't seem to have any choice but to endure. The point is, if you emailed me and didn't get a response, you have my apologies. I like to think I'm better than that, but this surgery slash recovery really has my life turned upside down. Don't hesitate to try again and I'll do the best I can. I do have an example of the way I like to handle emails. I received the following email a couple of weeks ago. The subject line read, fan mail. Just found out about your surgery. Hope you are feeling better. Most important, get well soon with an exclamation mark. The text of the email went as follows. Not sure if you would remember me. We have met at shows a few times over the years. I always felt you bring something very special to the people who love motorsports. My mother lives in the Harlem uh, slash Irving area near Resurrection Hospital. When you mentioned it in the show that I just watched, I thought I would send you a message to say thank you and to say get well, Bill. In the show you said you like carry out food. I am not sure if you have a favorite place, but my ma is near Superdog on Milwaukee Avenue. And we have many great places in the area that have gyros, uh, Italian beef, or Polish food. I would love to bring lunch for you and anyone who you may have staying with you. Uh, you have done so much for us gearheads, so thank you. Please let me know if that would be okay. If not, I understand. I live in Gurney, but I check up on my 86-year-old mother on and off, and it would be a pleasure to stop by just to say hello. Thanks, Jim. I was particularly struck by the last line of Jim's email and responded with the following. Thank you for the kind words. I continue with rehabilitation, but I'll be the first to admit I'm not a patient man nor a good patient. It's been four and a half months since the surgery, and I'm still only halfway there. It's like watching grass grow, only worse because I can't see it. All I can do is twiddle my thumbs and wait. No bending over, no lifting, and no twisting. Regarding your offer, I have things pretty much under control, but I would urge you to use the time to make some extra visits to your mom. Call them motorsport visits. I'm sure she would appreciate it. My mom has been gone for many years and I'd give anything for even a few more minutes with her. Don't miss any opportunity you have to spend with uh, time with your mom. Take it from someone who has been through it. One day you'll wish you'd spent more time with her. Thanks for writing. Then I added, say hi to your mom for me. If it isn't clear, I was encouraging Jim to use the time he'd planned to devote to me to visit his mom. Oh, and give Motorsports Unlimited the credit for it. Jim responded thusly, thank you for taking the time to respond and your heartfelt thoughts. I will tell mom and let her know about the motorsports visits, Bill's motorsport visits, parenthetically. She will get a kick out of it. When I visit her and your show is on, there's no recorder, I like to watch with her. My wife also makes comments about the girls' costumes and I think her comments are funny. 
I don't uh, know if you have heard about one of the largest monthly car shows north of you in Lake County in Mundelein, Illinois, in northern Illinois, it has many small car shows called Park on Park. You can find info on the web if interested. The season is over until spring. If the weather is good, it is common to see 250 to 300 cars on a weekday evening. Many beautiful, high quality and hard to find performance cars, mostly from the 60s and 70s. Vendors, food and music are also in the little town. They have a lot of auto repair, body shops, performance shops in this area for some reason. It may be an opportunity for you to sell some ads. I, I don't think he understands that public access television can't send, uh, sell ads and all this stuff, but it, it, I understand the thought. Uh, this is maybe 40 to 45 minutes from Franklin Park. If the weather is nice, it would be a nice place to do a show if you have not been there. As you know, it is much closer than the Chain of Lakes. Because it is a monthly show, not just a once a year deal, when there is a forecast for poor weather, many car owners will just wait until next month. I think because you see a lot of trailer queens, it may be worth checking out for a possible show. One last thing, when you start up again next year, it would be nice if you could let people uh, who are watching uh, know where you're going to uh, be for the locations, a list of the locations and times for your future shows. FYI, thanks again, Bill, get well soon. To which I responded, I have a better idea. If you can get a pic of your mom and you, nothing fancy, sort of a selfie, with your permission, I'll read our email exchange on the air while showing the picture. By the way, Motorsports Unlimited covered the Mundelein Park on Park show several times over the years. Apparently, the Mundelein Park on Park shows are still being held. I haven't heard from these folks lately, but if they are still doing them, they're well worth the trip to Mundelein. Jim did indeed send pics of he and his mom along with the following text. That sounds great, Bill. My niece had a shower today, so we took pictures with mom today at the White Eagle Banquets on Milwaukee Avenue in Niles. I will send the two photos of mom and I uh, for the show. I told her and she got excited and could not believe it. I think she feels like a celebrity. Can you please let me know when it is available to view? Thank you, Bill. That was a very nice, very nice of you. Please let me know if you need any more information or a better picture. Photos are on the way. Well, as you can see, the photos were great, and I'm pleased to show them, especially if it gives Jim's mom, Mary, pleasure. One of the reasons I'm doing this is to remind everyone in our audience to honor their parents. A little visit may not seem like much, but to our parents, it means the world. So, while I appreciate the offers of attention while I'm down, I feel much better if everyone spent the time chatting with their parents instead. I received a follow-up email from Jim Doman, and I hope I'm saying that right, it's D-O-W-M-O-N, Jim Doman, after I got the pictures. A little side story about my mom, Mary Doman, and my dad, Hank, who passed away several years ago. He served in World War II on the USS Nashville Light Cruiser CL-43. By the way, interesting side note there, uh, the number of the cruiser CL-43, uh, 43 was my uh, uh, racing number, my professional uh, motorcycle racing number for many years. So I don't know, I just, maybe because it's me and it was my number, it caught my eye. Anyway, uh, he worked his whole life at, a white ca uh, at a white cap after the war, a manufacturing company in Chicago where he fell in love with my mom. He was a good man and his word was gold. He was loved by all. Mom and dad both came from families of five children in each. But when I was a teenager, what I remember the most was my folks taking care of three of my four grandparents when they needed help because of health issues, etc. I was lucky to have giving parents good old-fashioned family values. Dad was working and mom was the caregiver for as long as she could for her mom and my father's mom and dad. And mom later took care of her brother first and then my dad after they ironically both had strokes. I was very lucky to have parents like them. Jim's story could have been mine and like Jim, I knew I was lucky. Having a stable, loving family is the best possible way to start one's life, and I often feel sorry for those who didn't have it. For those of us who did, our email exchange is just a little reminder to say thank you with a visit. Oh, and if you want to make me feel better, tell mom, or mom and dad, or dad, it's a Motorsports Unlimited visit. I'd like to think we handle our email from viewers as though they were friends. It's one of the pleasures of participating in public access television operating without the pressures of commercialism. I'll admit we haven't done a good job since my surgery for all of the reasons I've been trying to explain. Anyway, I hope Jim's mother Mary enjoys seeing herself on television. And, by the way, Mary, I don't know your son, but based on our email exchange, 
I think you and your husband, Hank, did well. But, like all kids, we sometimes forget. So, if he doesn't make those motorsport visits, give me a call and I'll remind him. Now, let's get back to some classic Motorsports Unlimited footage. We've gotten rid of the stools. We moved some of the paraphernalia out of the way. Uh, Denise, if you would go over and get one of those sawhorses that we've got over there. Uh, Frank will help you with what a sawhorse is if you don't know. Uh, Lynn, maybe you go over there and get the other sawhorse. Yep, bring it right over here and set it right down here. Good. Right there. And this one a little bit further over this way, Lynn. Okay, that's great. Uh, boy, this is, maybe this is going to take all of you, but let's try it with Chris and uh, Angie. We need that whole big tray set up there. Yeah, you'll have to go from the ends. I put everybody to work, don't I? <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Lynn, if you would go over and get that uh, transformer again, we put it off to the side, we move these things around. And I will begin to describe what this is. Uh, when you get that, Lynn, just set it up here on the end of the uh, uh, plywood. This, you were asking Angie about, uh, wasn't there a different uh, a, a arrangement of these things so you can do smaller work and all that. I think this is something you're gonna like. Uh, let me just demonstrate how it works to start out with. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Christine, would you take and plug that in, please? Let me make sure it's off first. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Then you're on the end. Would you get that uh, piece of styrofoam over there? Get a lot of exercise in today's show, you bet. All right, Angie, uh, why don't you step around that side? And I hope our mic cords aren't tangled here, Denise. Let me uh, go around with her. Hope the, the audience will forgive our awkwardness here. Uh, what do you think? Do we have enough wires going on? <laughs> uh. All right. The way this one is set up, now essentially this is the same thing as the other one that I showed you, except it's a little bit, it's still a bow in effect, but obviously it has a much deeper throat and it's bolted to a table. Uh, a couple things that we've done. Well, first let me show you how it works and then you have a little better idea what I'm talking about. Uh, Christine? Yeah, I think we got enough wires here. Yeah. Uh, yes, with one of the clamps, okay, and it's the same thing here. This is a piece of dowel up here, and if you notice, this piece mm -hmm. is separated from this by the wood, so this isn't really touching anything else. And it's the same thing down there. It's the hard to believe this was 24 He's years ago. Apparently, Bill had the motorsport the girls topic. right from the very yes. beginning. There is a wooden dowel in there to keep it from transferring electricity, and now what we have is the the circuit has to go through this wire in order for it to work. Now, I'm going to put this up to about 15, maybe a little bit better than 15. And now we can work this, and I don't know if we can get a camera shot of this, perhaps on camera two, maybe, I don't know. Uh, now, would that solve the problem that you were talking about? Yeah, about it would. <laughs> that would work for what you had in mind? It definitely would. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn this thing off again. And it's always a good idea to remember to turn it off. That thing can get very hot. Uh, there are two or three examples over there of um, letters that, uh, that we've cut out. And Frank, maybe you can help her find them. All right, great. Let me just toss these things out here. Now, Bill, yes. could you use wood? No. Could you work with wood with no, this? No, this? this is only for styrofoam. Um, obviously, a hot wire like that is it's not anywhere near it's hot not. enough to affect wood because, in fact, this is wood that it's on and it doesn't even begin. It doesn't really get that hot. Okay. Uh, it doesn't take much heat to do this. Now, what I'd like to do is, Christine, can you go over and uh, pick up a, um, a small template over there? You'll find one that I've already set up with some little nails sticking out of it. Uh, not an aluminum one, Frank. The, um, uh, it's a cardboard one and it's got uh, nails sticking out of it. 
This is quite a show tonight with everybody. It's a little like Bill is using the hot wire as a bandsaw in this application. Yeah, you can you can bring that one, though, Christine. Yeah, it's a brown one. Yeah, and it's got. Uh, Right. <laughs> All right. Now, Angie, we're going to have you give this a try first. I want to see that you can do this. And what we have here, if I can show the camera, uh, camera two perhaps can get a shot of that. I don't know. This is a standard template that comes, and they do it for a variety of things. This one happens to be Sears and Roebuck, um, a Sears and Roebuck router. I bought a router many, 20 years ago, and I bought a, uh, a template kit for the router. And it happens to work very well for this. But they also sell little templates like Ace Hardware. I've seen it and all that. And you punch this out, and that'll give you an H. Now, it's both an internal H and an external H, all right? Right. Now, we're going to start out, and I've already kind of tapped these through. This is a fairly stiff cardboard, and I want to make a project out of it here on the set. But we'll start out, in order to do this, let's say if you wanted an H, just push this down, push the brads in. And those are just little nails, by the way, folks, little brads. All right. Now, uh, what you do when you do this, a couple of things that you have to know. That if you stop, as you put the styrofoam into the wire, it tends to cool the wire off, which is okay. So you kind of set the, the temperature so that it has a nice light feel. You want just slight resistance against going long. If you should stop, the wire starts to get hot and it will melt away some of the styrofoam right in the area you're at. It, it sounds real complicated, it really isn't. After you do it a little bit, you get the idea is what you want to do is make sure you keep it moving all the time and just run around there. And don't try to follow it so much with your eye as you do with the feel of laying it lightly against the template. Okay? Uh -huh. Now you want to give it a try? Now I've got to turn the heat on. You now, gave her a hard letter there. Well, <laughs> no, what about an uh, L? No. Yeah, really. As a matter of fact, why don't you step over here on this side? Okay, and you want to do this side first so it remains attached to the big piece and do, do this side here as the last of it, all right? Okay. Okay, and before you go right after the thing, why don't you just cut half of that off there so you can get a feel of how the wire works, okay? Now let me put the heat on. All right, go ahead and give it a shot. Angie, good thing you have a stencil there. If you tried to do that freehand. It would be the saddest See? Lynn, why don't you step around that side? And as she does this, pull the scraps out of the way. Go ahead, Angie. Okay. Now, am I going around this side? Or? Well, you go ahead and take your choice. What was that, Lynn? I said not bad for her first try. No, and, it, it, and the more you practice this, the better you get at it. <laughs> I don't think you really want to double back like that. <laughs> Very good. Okay, don't go away. Be careful of that wire, though. It is now, hot. Yeah, the wire is hot. As a matter of fact, Christine, would you turn it off now, please? All the way. Okay. Now, what did you make? I made a letter H. A letter H. Was it hard? Um, no. The hard part, I think, would be if, if it could burn through the stencil. But it didn't, so I had an easy time. <laughs> no, that's why you make the stencil out of either. Uh, now, I've got some, that, and, and I'll be showing that uh, in a little bit. I've got some that I've made out of aluminum and everything. The idea is, and after you get a little bit more practice at it, you'll find that it's uh, really quite easy to lay, just let, put light pressure. Don't even really watch so much. Uh, and you don't want to double back or anything. You want to just kind of keep it moving as you're doing it, OK? OK. All right. Now, why don't you take your H and go back behind there. Uh, Denise, I'd like you to have you come on out. And Lynn, I want to have you cut one now. But we're going to complicate it for you because I can see that you already know quite a bit about this, right? <laughs> I've never done it before, so. Okay, I'm convinced that you're pretty pretty good at this then. I can do an L. <laughs> you can do what? An L. What do you mean an L? Just do an L without a stencil. <laughs> With, without a stencil, you think you can do it? Oh, no, well, okay, <laughs> now. <laughs> you go right ahead. I want to see it. Oh, okay. I hope you're enjoying the material I'm selecting to show you. Believe me, a ton of work went into acquiring it not just by me, but by everyone involved in Motorsports Unlimited, including, and probably most important, my Chris, or Chris Schutz, as you know her. You might be interested to know that the reason we seldom have our motorsport girls on the show anymore is because Chris passed away. 
Chris used to handle everything with the girls, from rounding them up to maintaining the costumes to helping them learn their roles on the show. When she passed away, I tried to keep things going the same way, but the burden was too much. I always knew how much work she did on the show, but I'm sure I never fully appreciated how much effort it took just to make sure we had girls in costume ready when it was time to shoot. People have often asked me about why I don't have the motorsport girls anymore. They usually think it was pressure from the cable companies. That had nothing to do with it. It was just simply too much work for one person. As I look through this early material, I really appreciate the girls and their contribution to the show and wish it could still be the same way, but it just isn't possible. By the way, speaking of the cable companies and the access centers who air Motorsports Unlimited, I want to say some kind words. Clearly, what I've been doing for the past several months is way outside of anything in any rule book. Actually, if I'd known I was going to be laid up for so long, I wouldn't even have asked. I must tell you, their cooperation and understanding has been overwhelming, and I couldn't appreciate it more. I've been producing Motorsports Unlimited for 30 years. I'm very proud of it, and more than anything, I want to keep it going. The cable companies and access centers have gone out of their way to help me struggle through these difficult times, and they didn't have to making their help even more remarkable. At 72 years old, I don't know how many years I have left, but I hope to be producing Motorsports Unlimited for all of them. The cable operators, access centers, and all of the people like the playback operators and, well, you know, if I try to name everybody, I'm sure I'll forget someone. So let's just say all who help make public access television possible have my heartiest thanks. Over the years, I've been on record as saying, if I had my way, only the cable operators would be allowed to broadcast because they're the only ones who provide a legitimate opportunity for everyone to be heard. It isn't said enough, and it should be. Oh sure, I've had my wars with the cable companies over the years. The system isn't perfect, but it's something, and at least everyone has a real chance to be heard. The past few months have been an eye-opener for me. If I, it could have been a war, and instead, it's been a bright spot in getting through what has turned out to be a lengthy, agonizing period of being incapacitated. A pleasant surprise, to say the least. I was thinking about all this last night while watching the first Democratic presidential debate and all of the attendant conversation about the importance of being on the air, and I couldn't help but wonder why these heavy-hitting political candidates don't do something about this outrageous confiscation of the public airwaves by commercial interests. The airwaves are public and are not owned by the license holders. These guys can all take a lesson from cable. Only cable offers the public a real opportunity to be heard, and they should be applauded for it. As one who has participated in public access television for 30 years and produced in excess of 1,400 hours of programming, I can tell you it's a national treasure, and I'm shocked that our nation's leadership allows a small number of commercial operations to literally be in charge of who becomes the leader of the free world. So, on the one hand, I want to publicly thank the cable industry and access centers for making it possible for everyone to be heard. And at the same time, I want to scold our nation's leadership for not insisting public access be a part of all mass media. It's a long overdue conversation and me, the guy with the show with the girls with the feathers, should not be the person to lead the discussion. Surely there must be some talented, deep-thinking young person or people out there who will see the importance of the discussion and step forward to take up the cause. You'll have a much better chance of being taken seriously than the guy with the cars and bunnies. <laughs> yes, that's how people often refer to our motorsport girls. But think about the discussion I've suggested. Meanwhile, Let's get back to the cars and bunnies. Next, we spotted a first-class Pro Street Chevy 2. Let's join Diana as she inquires. I understand that it took four years to complete this 1962 Chevy 2. Let's meet the man who did it. Hi, what's your name? My name is Dan Pelzer. Dan, where are you from? I'm from Lyle. Lyle? Can you tell me a little bit about this car? It's a 1962 Chevy 2. 
Uh, it's got about a 600 horsepower small black Chevy and um, a 9 inch 4 rear end with a turbo 400 trans. How many miles do you have on it? Uh, 800. Oh, so obviously you don't drive it very often. <laughs> <laughs> Not very often. Okay. Bill, do you have any technicals? Well, I have one for you, Diana. Come back up here. I want you to take a look underneath the hood, and I do this to Peggy all the oh, time, no. and she always she always gets mad about it. What is this? Uh, engine? <laughs> no, no. The engine the engine's down here. What is this? Uh, block? No. What is this? <laughs> Uh, carburetor? Now watch, you're going to be so impressed. <laughs> Peggy, come down here. Just watch how impressed you're going to be. Come on over here, Peggy. Come on over here. I just want to... This is what happens when you've been on Motorsports Unlimited for that? three years now. Come over here, Peggy. I'm asking her what this is. It's a supercharger. Oh, and geez. and what's a supercharger? <laughs> Peggy, tell her what a supercharger is. I was trying to feed her a line. Compresses air. It's an air compressor. Air compressor. That's all it is. a big okay. air compressor. Into the cylinders. Yes, and what, do you, and what do you think putting a supercharger on an engine and compressing air into the motor, what do you think that'll do to horsepower? Make it go fast? Yeah, but how much? Probably a lot, Bill. It is a lot. <laughs> go on back over there. Peggy, go on back over there too. Precede me going back. Yes, as a matter of fact, the beauty of a supercharger is it can literally make as much horsepower as you want it to make just by turning the pressure up more and more and more, driving it faster and faster and faster. You can pump enough pressure into a motor where you can double, triple, quadruple the horsepower right up until the moment that you throw the crank out of the bottom of the block. Am I right? You're correct. Yeah, you can make as much power as you want. Yes, you can. And how many pounds of boost do you run? Uh, 12 pounds. Okay, 12 pounds is conservative. Uh, yes, well, that's quite a bit for the street. It's quite a bit for the street. For street cars, by the way, I should say, they're normally limited to about five or six pounds. Uh, when the factories do uh, superchargers, I'm thinking of the early uh, Olds F85s, not that they had superchargers, five or six pounds, and we come up with tricks to override the spring so we can get them up to 10, 12 pounds. But that's about the most you can run for the street. Yes, that is. But if you want to make some real horsepower, you want 18, 19, 20 pounds. Yes, it would be very unreliable at that point, though. <laughs> You're exactly right. Why'd you build the car? Uh, just uh, for the looks that you get and uh, for the sheer excitement of uh, when you floor it, uh, the feeling that you get with a supercharger. And I understand you did most of the work yourself. Yes, I did. Well, congratulations. It's really well done. Do you do a lot of shows, a lot of car shows like these? Uh, yes, I do quite a bit, but uh, it's it takes a lot out of you. <laughs> well, you how, how old are you? I'm 32. Okay, because you look real young. You're not young. No. <laughs> uh, oh, that's still young. Yeah, come, on. come on. 30 has already turned the corner, kid. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for spending time with us. Please don't run away because I've got something else i got to show the audience. Peggy, step right on out here. I found out something about Peggy the other day. Miss, if you would, come on in here, please. We've got a helper here on this particular piece. Step right <laughs> over here, just like this. And your name is? Amanda. Amanda what? Bradshaw. And where are you from, Amanda? Westmont. Okay, and what have you got in your hands there? Close. <laughs> this is, you're not going to believe this, Peggy. She's oh. a fan of the show. Bill. Okay, wait a minute, Peggy. You're not on mic. Oh. Okay. okay, tell the audience what we have here a brownie uniform and a Girl Scout uniform. And whose are they? Mine. I got them on Peggy, my closet. Peggy, <laughs> Peggy was a brownie and a Girl Scout. And hopefully, yes. right now, we've got her brownie picture over there, the only one we could find, right? Right, exactly. We didn't have too many. Now, does this look like a one time brownie and Girl Scout to you? I sold a lot of cookies. I got to go to Great America. From selling cookies? From selling cookies. Was uh -huh. it a good experience? Did you enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. I mean, you we had a lot of recommend recommend it to other girls? I would, definitely. Even the Cub Scouts, as we've talked about before on the show. That's right, you got your kids a lot involved. Of Cubs, you know, Cubs, yes. No, not in Cub Scouts, but we have interviewed a lot of children with the Cub Scouts. But right. they, it's something that they really don't want to do. But I've got a daughter who might want to do this, and I'll encourage her if she wants to. Okay, well, that's just great. Now, we want to put this young girl to work for a minute. I want you to turn around over here and look at our camera, and I want you to say... Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. That's right, I was a brownie and a Girl Scout and enjoyed every minute. Now, let's check out a classic 50 style custom. This one's called California Sun and we all know that it's Diana's favorite. Let's get to meet the owner and where he's from. What's your name? Uh, Jerry Didio. Where are you from? Uh, DeKalb, Illinois. Okay, I see this is an inter it's an interesting color here. Looks like a uh, metallic white. That's uh, abalone flake. Okay, and you had a little flame tray. I see you have those things sticking out. What are those for? Uh, curb feelers. They're just for kind of looks, you know. Okay, is this a chop top? Looks like it's a chop top here. Yeah, it's uh, chopped four inches in the front, and I put a 51 Plymouth roof into the car. So I took the whole stock roof off and put a 51 Plymouth roof into it. Sounds like a lot of work. So that's a chop, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's check it. <laughs> okay, let's bring Bill in. 
Wait a minute, did I hear you say that the curb feelers are just for looks? Well, in this car, yeah, I don't Absolute, get too close to the okay. curb. Okay, I was going to say, you're going to give everybody a misimpression. We're talking about these things. Chuck, come down here, give me a camera shot here. Uh, these things were popular in the uh, in the mid to late 50s, and they're called curb feelers, and he's just doing it for decoration because with a full custom like this, with all this work, you wouldn't let it get close to anything. But those were called curb feelers, and what they were, when you parked the car, instead of scraping your tires against the curb, you would hear those things scraping the curb. That's why I they're like called that. curb feelers. Yeah, that'll help you, wouldn't it? No. No, no, I, I'm fine, Bill. I'm fine with my car. She's still 19 years old. She still doesn't drive to the show. What? Ah. That's because I get my way. Ah. <laughs> Anyhow, a great car, full custom, and I want to point out, again, Chuck, take a broad shot of the car, that this is done in a traditional 50s fashion, correct? Yeah. That was your intention? Yeah, that's you, what I was trying you, to get, achieve there. Well, you achieved it because yeah. I lived the period. <laughs> Believe me, uh, don't go away. We've got a question down here. And uh, he got just the right look everywhere, as a matter of fact. He's got the French headlights, and he's got, I mean, really, I'm sorry, go so ahead. the custom, that's not an original grill, and all oh, the no, that's added, so it's like a different car grill. Everything. It's really cool. I like it. Now, remember, back in this. I couldn't hear hardly any of it. Back, back in this period of time, you would have had chrome headlight rims from the factory around here. You would have had chrome around the grill area here. Mm -hmm. This has all been French, meaning all the sheet metal and bodywork has been welded and leaded in and, and made like smooth. It's old grill or something. Yeah, the it? grill, or, yeah, there's probably, uh, oh, I'm not, let's find out what uh, what well, the question is the grill what did you get the grill from 48 Olds the grill is a 48 Olds yeah okay he's got a 48 Olds mobile grill by the way the uh, teardrop spotlights were also popular back in the 50s uh, th those are spotlights so that you can uh, shine them in the windows and find street addresses before they had street lights oh I didn't know that Absolutely. teardrop lights and, That's neat. and by the way that. take a look at that interior Peggy take a look take a look oh, is that beautiful? take a look Not, wow, gorgeous! It's beautiful. Look at the look at the dashboard. Look, look what he's done there. That. Incredible! Wow, that's beautiful. Is the car picking up the sparkles, Chuck? Uh, no, the the carpeting doesn't sparkle. You don't have sparkling in the no, carpet, right? No. But it's leather there. interior. Is that leather interior? Leather interior. Although I'm surprised you didn't. It's it's not really a tuck and roll, which would have been popular in the fifties. This is a little more elaborate. No, that was my design inside. They're like a sunburst. Okay. Yes, Peggy. Wait a minute. Those sticking out. What we just went through. You'll have to I watch the hear. tape. I'm not going to oh, tell okay, you. Then don't do it again. I'll watch, uh, it. I'll watch the tape. Anyhow, great car. Did you do any of the work on it? I built the whole car myself. Wow. You did it yourself? Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. You did Beautiful. the upholstery, the paint, everything? Upholstery, everything Beautiful. on the car, yeah. You did the sheet metal work? Yes, all the sheet metal. Two years of customizing. Do you do this for a living? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, body <laughs> shop? Body you got a body shop? Yeah. What is In it? Sycamore, Illinois. What's the name? Uh, Marty's Body Shop. Boy, nicely done. I also want to point out, too, that we've got the French in, probably a power antenna. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice piece of work. Right. Diana, California Sun, you like that, right? Love California Sun. This is my vote, Bill. This is my <laughs> vote. <laughs> yes, yeah, somebody have a question? It looks like the sun is out. The sun isn't uh, out anymore. Well, which is perfect, because that's the only way we can do a white car. When the sun is so intense, we can't really do it. Anyhow, folks, another example of the vast variety of cars that you find at these local summer car shows. If you don't go to these things, you're just cheating yourself. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, President of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or email us directly at msutv at aol.com. We enjoy hearing from our audience and encourage you to let us know what you think. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.